This is the Grounded Podcast number eight with me. I got Echo Charles here. Yep. We got Andy Stump here. Indeed. And we got Leah Taylor here kicking it. Hey. Doing, doing, uh, we're all in jujitsu lockdown right now. Yeah. Well, allegedly. Kind of. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly in, in jujitsu lockdown. Is this like back in the day where, you know, if you know that your friend is clean, then you can go ahead and get after it? <laughs> If you know right? you're clean too. Yeah, like you're clean. This girl you met, she's clean. Well, we're good. Okay. Or whatever. The right? word is escaping me right now, but what was it back in the day where they abolished alcohol? Prohibition. Prohibition. Yeah. This is kind of like that. We have speakeasies. Oh, because jujitsu's gone underground now. <laughs> <laughs> jujitsu's gone underground because mm-hmm. you can't uh, roll in the public. You Correct. can't have. You can't have. 78 people on the mat just getting their sweat on you know, close contact. In your ears and, yeah, that's, that's good. That's a good Can you move, roll jiu-jitsu with a mask on? No. Does I mean, yeah, help? but no, it doesn't help. No. What are you supposed to do? Okay, for someone that can't roll right now. I saw a little kid on the Warrior Kid like website. Did you see this? The kid's got a blanket. And he like puts the blanket between his legs like in guard. And then he makes little arms with the blanket. And he starts working his Camaros. Right? Mm. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's kind of the way to go at this point. I think people are getting creative. I've seen some videos of how to make your own at-home training dummy. Yeah. But mostly what I think is happening is people are meeting up. Yeah. The secret handshake, the knock, Mm -hmm. the location and time. Jiu-Jitsu speakeasies. And they're getting it on. That's what's happening. I think so. Is your school, is your academy closed? Uh, Okay. Have you been in it since it's been closed? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to go in it while it's closed, that would be against the law. Has anyone here made legitimate progress ever from watching videos? I'm too early, I think, to answer that question. But you haven't watched a video and been like, oh, I see how he's doing that. I'm going to do that now. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I think what well, it's going to depend, right? Where if it's like, if you see a technique that's like the answer to maybe a question that you've mm-hmm. always had or something, or like a, a very specific issue that you've always had defensively or whatever and they give you essentially the answer not necessarily the answer so now you got to practice it but Mm -hmm. like something that you already know how to do physically Mm -hmm. but you're like oh okay let me do that at that time right there and with a detail perhaps a detail yeah whatever like i think it can be like a a lot of things yeah leah yeah same solve to solve a specific problem you can rolls if you have a certain level of jujitsu I think it's harder it to it pick out yes. the bad videos because anyone with a cell phone can make a jujitsu video that doesn't make it good. So it's, yeah, you have to have a little experience to kind of check. I had a, a, a situation when I was in Virginia Beach. I was training with Gustavo Machado. Sure. Guga. Sure. Good nickname? Uh, yeah. Good nickname. Guga. So well, when I was training there, I think he gave me a, like a videotape. And VHS? Yeah, like a videotape. Get it. Bro. <laughs> Come on, man. That takes half your carry on bag yeah. right there. <laughs> so he gave me like a videotape. Cool. I borrowed it for a few days and it was a bunch of like championship matches or whatever. And there was one match. I was watching this guy and I, I wish I could remember this guy's name, but he was so offensive in his jujitsu, like so attacking that it changed the way I did jujitsu. It changed the way I did jujitsu from one video. Like I watched probably like three of this guy's matches, mm-hmm. and I I was like, oh, he's going for oh, oh yes he oh, and I was like, I wait a second, I could I could do that. Like I could start yeah. step maybe not do that, but I could move my game in that right. direction. And that guy was like a he was a black belch, sure. and at this time I was a blue was. belch boy. Did you say belch? Yeah, <laughs> like burp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a lot of times so, you know my Portuguese accent comes out. Yeah, you know, yeah. When, yeah. I, when I start talking about jujitsu. My my latent. Uh, I am learning a Portuguese. lot about you in the last like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before we go deep down the jujitsu rabbit hole, mm-hmm. I'm the newest person at it at this table. Obviously, I've been at it for about 18 months. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you, Echo. So I'm behind the curve on a lot of things that have happened in the jujitsu world, obviously. And I, I was watching a video yesterday, but it wasn't technique based. And your name actually popped up on it, and I just wanted. Maybe some clarification or explanation of this video. Okay. It was called G in a G. <laughs> and my question for you is, what the fuck, man? Why didn't you shut that down at any point in time that you were filming that? Uh, Rear naked choke. 
Socrates, Plato, and whatever yeah, that dude's yeah. name was. He lays out these people. There's some deep thinkers. And yeah. maybe this guy is a deep thinker. I don't know. I sure. don't know this person at all. Yeah. yeah. But then at the end, uh, it, like as the credits or whatever they're called popped up, I was like, Echo <laughs> Charles. You, you have some explaining to do. Yeah. So, uh, And I think this video came out like 10 years ago. Like yeah. I said, it came out to me 24 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> you, you missed. That's good that it's still in circulation, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if that's good or not. Actually. No, no, no. That was a great production. Stop. You know? It wasn't. Don't lie. Actually, here, and I, we talked about this, too, because he sent me essentially the same question right when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so... But he did say this. He was like, hey, the video production quality was actually pretty good. I will give you that. But you should have shut it down due to the content. <laughs> hey, that's, that was what do you call above my, my pay. Very good. Yeah, you, you know? were probably on a yeah. daily at that point. See, this, yeah. is, this, yeah. is a, this is going to end up being a discussion about taking ownership of things. Because yeah. to sit there and be like, well, you know, hey, well, that's not mine. That's yeah. not my job yeah. over yeah. there. No, at no, what no. point Factually did you realize, true. at what point in that production, though, did you realize you're like, oh, what's going on here? Well, you know, uh, artistic expression has many forms, you know. Some and of them are bad. And, and I was <laughs> at, that, uh, at that moment in that uh, particular situation, I was in no position to critique, judge, or uh, evaluate overtly or should but I say you could have walked away at any time. Y here's yeah. what, here's yeah. what I thought. You know? Okay. This is what I thought. So w w when it came out, I thought, oh, cool. This is going to be really like, a re this is a great idea. I wish I would have thought of this very funny thing, right? I <laughs> oh, you I, thought of satire. I, I, you know, you're, even <laughs> a like there's a couple, there's a little while in the beginning where you're like, oh, this is funny, right? Because it is funny to think about, hey, no big deal. I'm wearing my gi. I'm going to the supermarket. I'm wearing my gi. I'm going to the club. I'm wearing my gi. I'm going to a parent-teacher conference, right? That, that could be very funny, right? Yeah. And then probably, I don't know how long, I don't know how many seconds it was into the video. And even as I was watching it for the very first time, I was like, when is this gonna, when is this gonna get funny? Like, when is this all gonna, right. gonna tie up and get yeah. funny? And in the end, you, it seemed like you tried to salvage it a little bit with him trying to go to the club. I, th you know, I think that it was, there was a like percentage of it that was that, that was, hey, this isn't all like real serious. But I think maybe uh, like, are you uh, talking uh, about how a viewer might portray it? <laughs> no, because no. I think the people starring in it didn't have uh, that mentality. I, I, I'm speaking factually. I think. I think. But I. Th speaking I do think factually, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me. I think he actually said, "I think I'm speaking factually." I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, double thinks. Like I know it's true, but I can't prove it. Kind of thing. Um, That's called the Illuminati. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think he was. I think there was an element of that where it's like it's not hundred percent serious, but I think as a result or at the way it turned out, it didn't come off. Like so maybe that. the editor, filmer, uh, yeah, yeah. could have been my fault. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, again, it's one of those things that we can always reach back to. I always kind of hold that over your head as as bad things could happen in yeah. the world. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think I do feel like, I mean, whether you like the song or not, I felt I felt very happy with the video production. Bro, why you Still keep going back do, to that thing? Because that was my job. Yeah, all right. It was really the only jiu-jitsu question I had. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy Stump, for, you know. Um, you know what? Yeah. It also might be, you know, you can't surround yourself with yes men. You know, you can't go through life and be well, like. Well, you can. Well, you can, but it just you might get have bad results. G and a G. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. <laughs> well, here's the thing. That video. Okay, so you ever read YouTube comments on your on your stuff? I stopped recently. Okay, so the, I'm going to talk about the reason you stop. Well, I'm I'm assuming the reason you stopped. So I've had YouTube in comments. general. I would say I don't read the YouTube comments. Not even the stuff that I put out. Yeah. Well, my point is that I've had way worse reactions to my video than that. Like that is like really oh yeah what I had, I had um so I did this video called uh, bikini girl lightsaber fights oh yeah 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 okay so that's you know, when you were overall, a misogynistic overall I hit you know <laughs> this video was your idea oh uh, I think it was like the leftovers of an idea that I had this so it was is like before the leftovers, we started so like whatever legitimately <laughs> <hanging out too. laughs> some of the some ideas were no, still sliding actually through. it wasn't actually we weren't making the podcast I know that oh. Uh, this is pre-podcast. Maybe we were, maybe this we is weren't. You had way too much time. Nonetheless, on the and YouTube way too much liberty to one, execute stuff. One of the YouTube comments said, "Whoever made this video should die." <laughs> I'm not joking. No. Yeah, literally says that. That's awful. So I'm like, hey, you know, all the G and the G uh, comments or whatever, mainly from Jocko. Now from you. Thanks, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know those, whatever. Because he turned off comments real quick. 
Oh yeah, and took it down and everything. But like, I just had questions, not necessarily. Wait, he took comments. it down. It's still up, apparently. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, is it bootleg it, copies down, or whatever? But yeah, you know, people download it and redo it, and mm. you know, they want to make jokes. It's or whatever. out there. Oh yeah, it's out there fully, hundred percent. Can you look back? In like the jujitsu world, and there's certain things as time goes by where things that were cool at one time become lame. Obviously, right? Yeah. I'm super stoked that there are no pictures of me wearing a tin foil gold affliction T-shirt, right? But did you wear that ever? No, no, I didn't, like I didn't read it. I didn't read. I didn't wear it. But, but so many people were wearing that stuff during that peak of whatever. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I I think I came danger close on a few occasions wearing walkout shirts, like walkout shirts for a fighter that I was cornering where they were getting issued these like super just, what do you even call that? What do you call those? things what the shit like is there a name you well, know the thing uh, with an the, eagle and a tank and a yeah. explosion and like, like kind of like one of your videos on a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh you guys like that one. Oh, oh, okay all right all right that was, oh, that was landed okay all right, <laughs> all right. The, uh i don't know that those shirts have a name thank you um <laughs> my coach calls them scary shirts yeah, see, yeah, okay. Yeah, something yeah, like that. That, something like that, I think. Yeah, skulls, eagle, wings, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You did come close plenty of times with the throwdown situation. Yeah, yeah, throwdown was throw down. Oh, throw yeah, down I got border. some pictures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there was the one foil. that was kind of had some, uh, it looked like little, like, little Art designs. Deco. Right, yeah, yeah, all Things. over a throwdown yeah. thing. But no foil. The foil, that was like the, Next the panic. That was like the tip yeah. top. You had the foil, Affliction. you were in the game. Oh, yeah, the Affliction. Affliction. Tap out a, head song. That's the other weird thing is you look ba- back at old UFCs and the amount of companies that have come and gone that were just trying to jump on, and yeah, including, yeah. including including with and starting with Tap Out, you know, which the guys from Tap Out were freaking awesome guys. And the, like, the one thing I will give full credit, those guys were, man, back in the day, they were, we were at, we would be at jujitsu tournaments and we would be at uh, King of the Cage fights and those guys would be there. When they talk about selling shirts out of the back of their vehicle, I saw that. Like yeah. they were legitimately doing that. They were totally in the game. So, but then, but I think that's the only brand that could say that they did that. Everyone else was just trying to capitalize. Yeah. Eh, I guess there Affliction, were some, I'm, I'm, there's some other legit brands. Affliction kind of course, like maybe got a little hint, like maybe grabbed a little hint of their maybe style mm. and then was like, hey, I like that element. Let's, Let's base our whole shit degree. on that. Yeah. And then they went out and man, that, that landed, man. That landed hardcore for a while. Like just that whole style. It was weird to be in Vegas for a fight and there'd be like dudes walking around with like three hundred and fifty dollar affliction jeans, jeans and yeah. then like uh uh one what of did those affliction aff- jeans look like they had like, like the shirts man yeah they, they were bedazzled the, yeah. Yeah. yeah yes yeah, yeah. no kid like bedazzled. you're saying that like you're thinking you're you're <laughs> making my 11 year old daughter yeah you're thinking like, you're making a yeah, funny yeah. comment because you're taking it to an extreme that wouldn't really exist it existed full <laughs> on full <laughs> on oh yeah yeah scary These jeans. acid was yeah, scary <laughs> jeans scary yes. and then there'd be you know dude that was whatever he he a guy that had spent a bunch of time like working on his hair you know oh, yeah. like fully full hot, like, like yeah yeah f- yeah that whole thing yeah yeah that is true so there's things in the jiu-jitsu world though that you remember when remember when, I don't know how much is it still like putting patches on your geese of your sponsors yeah and that used to be a sign of like hey yeah. Better watch out for that guy's got a bunch of patches on his gi. Yeah, that's still but a But then thing. the move that's is just to put a bunch of patches on your gi yeah, regardless yeah, if true. you know anything. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. mental game first. I, I'm not I'm not mad at that to be honest with you. No, for neither am I. Reasons. I'll tell you when I when I was at when we were at Fabio Santos and occasionally guys would come in from Brazil. Hell yeah. And oh, the other comes fun, the accent, huh? Yeah. I know, bro. <laughs> not only were they from Brazil, but <laughs> but they would be and this is I remember. I remember I re, I think I actually framed this up myself. Because if I wanted to describe who these guys were to someone else, I'd say, oh, these guys are, oh, he's like, oh, yeah, there's a couple brown belts came in from Brazil. Mm-hmm. from the, And I would say this as if it meant something. I'd say from the competition circuit. <laughs> circuit. And then yeah. I'd say, and then I'd throw in there just to make sure whoever I was talking to fully understood what I was reckoning with. Yeah. I'd say, and just be covered in 
sponsorship patches. Right. Yeah, they need and then you then good. you get a whole picture of what you're doing with yeah, as yeah. a blue belch. Yeah, that's the, like that's myself. the top guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, not only does that, like, indicate that part of it, I think that's kind of where it started, and or as far as the feeling goes, when you see a guy with the patches. Mm. So it's like, yeah, that guy's sponsored. He must be dope, you know? He must, like, win, because, you know, you have that in your mind. And then after a while, it sort of just looks cool. You know how it gets ingrained in your mind that that's, mm. like, legit, so it just looks cool now? Yeah. And then... um. And then, yeah, as, you know, more industries, more brands came. And, oh, just wear my patch, you know? So you just put patches on your stuff. It looks cool. And then and then you get the guy, like, when you get the guy from a fob and he's wearing the freshest, you know, gear direct from whatever company. And you take one look at him and you go, oh, well. Mm. Fob it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. These are the guys that you you, uh, you point can pick out on, well, on tactical assholes, right? I do. I yeah. spend it. That's in. what that's what tactical assholes is. It's for those guys. Is yeah. Fobbit a real word? Yeah. It's a real world in the world I come from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fobbit is a real world. They have all the gear, but it, I bet you could see it in the jujitsu world too. Like they might have all this stuff, but like that guy moves weird yeah. from a distance. Like you can tell the guy from the fob who you're like. Yeah, your magazines are in backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and your dust cover's still on there, buddy. Yeah. Like, yeah, Roger that. Get in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Tactical assholes is specifically for that. Yeah. Only for that for me to make fun. So of you could make a jujitsu assholes. Yeah, Somebody has that. Here's the, the thing, though. Here's the thing. Jujitsu has the proof, right? You have to get on the match. Right. And you have to be able to, you know, you have to be able to do the business. So the Fobbit or tactical asshole guy. Mm-hmm. Before he, I'm saying, like when he's just standing there or walking around yeah. or whatever, you're saying you can sort of you can feel it. One hundred percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in jujitsu, you can't really do that unless he starts rolling. He has to do something jujitsu like physically. Like I bet he if he to, did like some wonky ass warm up, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Is that is physical, true. Though. Oh yeah, yeah but yeah, but if physical. he's just walking around, he's coming and shaking everybody's hand. It's like you can't really tell. He has a bunch of patches or no patches. It's like man, you can't really tell. But the, how uh, fast can you tell once you apply some pressure? Very fast, yes. <laughs> right yeah. when you, right, basically, right when you lock up with it. Yeah. Guy. Oh, Leah, yeah. how hard does someone fight to not tap to you when when you see them? You'll watch someone roll and they'll like tap, but then they're going with you because you're a female and they're just not tapping. Uh, at my school, it's not a problem now. But if I go somewhere where I'm traveling, um, you know, within SBG, there's not many female black belts, so they'll kind of know who I am or have an idea. But if it's at a different school, very hard is the answer. Real hard. <laughs> uh, we have a, a, a female black belt here mm-hmm. named Nareet. And she, number one, she's awesome. Number two, she's unassuming. About as unassuming. Well, she, she's, I guess she could be more unassuming if she was really small. But she, t- she puts guys to sleep. I would say she probably has put more guys to sleep than any other black belt at this gym. For that very reason, guys are they just not, refuse. They are yeah, not yeah. looking to tap to a female. Yeah, how tall are you? Uh, about five nine. Yeah, she's so pretty tall. I mean, I would, I would imagine. Enough you know, still, though, I think guys like with girls or female oh, training sure. partners, it's like man, they don't want to do it. Yeah, that's a reality that's hard to accept. I no. think See, that's dumb to me. <laughs> that just reinforces the legitimacy of what it is. Because totally. if. You switched from a male body to a female body, and the outcome was completely different. And they're doing the same thing. And be like, "This is this is dog shit." That's yeah. why. That's why jujitsu is awesome. Yep. I was lucky because when I started to, uh, training jujitsu, there was no females that trained, other than like my wife, maybe Susie. You know, Susie, Kid Sorry. Palego's wife. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there was like no females. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I'm saying lucky, but I never. I was gonna say, why were you lucky? Well, I was lucky for my own ego. To not have to roll with yeah, girls yeah. when I was a whatever, twenty six years old, big, tough, two hundred and twelve pound Navy SEAL, getting well. tapped out by a female. I had the luck of that not happening to me. <laughs> I think uh, it was I, my lucky. ego had the luck <laughs> of that. Not I happening was to less me. lucky in that experience. <laughs> yeah. But in the day and age you were training, there was plenty of men who acted like females, so yeah. still were there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, so there's that. Yes, yeah. it is one hundred percent. It's just my ego was able to, uh, luckily get by that because otherwise you know and now this I will say f- to your point when like let's say someone that's a lower belt oh you got caught by a purple belt you got it's like yeah jiu-jitsu works I tell that to my I tell that to my training partners I'm like hey jiu-jitsu works if you do jiu-jitsu right it doesn't matter if you p- you put a, the right move on a black belt and the black belt doesn't react correctly 
You're gonna tap. You're gonna tap, or you're gonna get your arm broken and put to sleep. That's the beauty. Yep. There were a few people that quit uh, early on, so I was not a black belt yet. But when I started to be able to hold people down, I remember we were in one practice and uh, I held the guy in mount the whole round, and I didn't really know many submissions, so I just held him down. And we, you know, we bump fist at the end, and he just got up and he got his gym bag in the middle of open mat and just walked out. And we're like, "Oh hey," we're like, "Are you all right?" Yeah, yeah. He's like, "See you later." He's like, "See ya." We never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I believe it. Uh, that's, yeah, I believe that's, that too. that's when the ego is a destroyer. You know, that's when the ego is a destroyer because you can't handle that, and you decide instead of confronting that problem, your ego says just avoid it at all costs. Yeah. And that's what that guy has to live with for Throw the rest of his life. Throw your gym bag and your belt yeah. in the trash can on the way out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's good though that that happened and that that happens. That's good because it's obvious. Like, and people can change for sure. But he's like there for the, completely the wrong reason, you know. So if think about like, how much he's limiting his potential by making that choice as opposed to going headlong at that. For sure, he's like, oh, oh yeah. that really bothered me. So maybe I'll f- dive into that and figure out what it was. Instead, he's like. Yeah, this gym bag looks like it fits good in the trash. Like. Yeah, well, and that's where that's where jujitsu marries or or mimics life, right? If yeah. your attitude is everything that you can't crush out of the gate, or anything that hurts your ego, you just run away from. Well, yeah, I think a lot of guys don't start to, especially now that there's like the ex- more of an exposure or has been for a while or whatever. They'll be like, oh, like like, like a weightlifter type dude or mm-hmm. something. I'll be like, oh man. Because I think a lot of the times when we lift weights and get big muscles, it's mm-hmm. like to kind of cover up on the inside. Like, uh, you what know. are you saying about yourself? Uh, you know, <laughs> hey, what are you saying about yourself? Obviously not me, but I'm just saying. And you, you know. cover those muscles in tattoos. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shave your head. <laughs> Jack. I'm just saying, you know, you go from that. Dang, we all just got a little to, glimpse into the weird psyche of Echo Charles. Well, it up seems the, like you guys are having fun with it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but Cover up harder. None, <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless, it like, yeah, so they'll they'll not want to start. They don't want to go to that um, to that place of humility, you know, where, yeah. where they got to be kind of the, for lack of a better term, the loser. So know? other end of the spectrum, Leah. Why wouldn't every female just be like, oh, I'm going to train this so I can chop some dudes out? Well, it takes a long time. So they have that idea when they start. And if they haven't been an athlete before or they're smaller, just the the open mats are really hard. You know, you're just spending a lot of time on the bottom. You're getting tapped, not necessarily with jujitsu, but yeah. just size, strength, speed. They get injured more. So it's a challenging first couple years. You know, we have a women's class to help offset that. And I'll have some ladies that'll just roll in women's class for a while till they learn mm-hmm. more of the structure and survival skills. Uh, and then they can transition out of that. So if you're, if you're going to give advice to a female starting jujitsu, what would you... What were some like pointers you would give them? Uh, pointers, I would say pick your training partners in open mat. So I tell the ladies to try to warm up with a colored belt to pick training partners within 20 to 30 pounds of them if possible. Uh, if they don't know who's on the mat to watch one round and you can see who's rolling really hard and uh, you don't have to roll with those people. So I just basically you don't have to roll with everyone and to advocate for themselves, have five or six people in mind that they wanna roll with, hit those people, and if someone comes up to them in between that isn't on that list or is way out of their weight class, and usually what'll happen is it'll be a really big new white belt and a female that's left over, because everyone partners up and Mm. no one wants to go with Mm. the giant white belt, Mm. but no one wants to go with the girl either, so you would be surprised how many times that matchup happens. So I tell them you can tell them you wanna get a drink, tell them Coach Leah said they're not on your list or you know you can uh, just sit around just tell them no I'm sorry you know I'm not up to training with you today so I just I tell them to do that and some of them are confident enough to do that and the longer they roll the more able they are to do that but at first you know I literally had that talk with a woman she was standing on the side of the mat like she was just about to jump into a shark pit you know she was so nervous and I said well just pick your training partners you know and I turned around and she literally was paired up with the biggest white belt, one stripe white belt in the mat. And I yelled at him and I said, what are you doing that you picked her? And he's like, oh, she looked like she needed a partner. I was like, you look like you need a rest. I was like, you're gonna play guard the whole time and I'm gonna look at you like this while we're rolling and she's gonna pass the guard and you're gonna let her you know, have a decent round. So 
it's just, um, yeah. And if they do pick partners like that, they'll develop a skill set and survival skills and the mindset to be able to roll with bigger people. But at first, it's just, I don't know how much you're really learning, you know, with five minutes straight and cross sides bottom or mount bottom, yeah, you know. Yeah. Tornado white belt. Man, that's a good. <laughs> That's a good little tactic right there where you make the in, the instructor like, OK, if you, you're you're talking about like if there, it's a mixed class, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where you as the instructor can be like, hey, you, you know, you female or or a group of females or whatever. Here's your list of people here that you can roll with. Mm-hmm. You can be like that guy, that guy. That. And then so they can be like so they don't have to face that big rejection situation. They don't have to be like, yep. oh, I'm not going to roll with you, you know, because some people that even that is kind of intimidating. They you know? won't. Especially if yeah. you don't know them. Mm-hmm. And so, but they don't have to do that anymore. They can be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like the coach has a list for me. You're not on the list. Sorry. You know, mm-hmm. and it's way easier. That's a good little tactic yep. right there. And I want them to just stand up and walk to their next partner. Yeah. That would be oh, ideal. Yeah. Just get up and, you know, upper belts are fine because even if they're bigger, they'll control their weight. They'll control their technique. So, yeah. you know, once they're above like purple belts, it's fine. But below I was going to ask you if you distinguish between blue belt and purple belt. Yeah. Because that's a big yeah. jump. It is. Yeah. The chances of a purple belt you know going nuts on a on a female or a or a new partner or whatever is pretty small chance of a blue belt well it's <laughs> game blue, on blue belt yeah. might get a little psycho oh yeah what, what, yeah what, what, what i've had plenty of purple belts lose their shit on me <laughs> he's on the safe list actually for the for the smaller people to roll with he'll, he'll play guard yeah i don't feel a difference though there's just been plenty of purple belts who lose their goddamn mind on me I meant yeah. you rolling with smaller partners. Oh, yeah, Definitely everyone tries to care. kill him or most people. <laughs> How tall are you, Andy Stone? Six six. <laughs> six foot. <laughs> what I'm saying, a lot of the time, so a, a purple belt, let's say, because I'd say this would, would kind of go into the realm of maybe more often losing their shit on you as far as purple belts go. Yeah. If you're a big athletic Navy SEAL, Did you, that, factually, that last word that you just oh used God. is a huge problem. Yeah, so, and you'd, you'd think... Like, oh, yeah, that's just maybe an occupation where, but there's a certain persona, I think, generally speaking, whether it applies mm. to you or not, but that's what you are, factually. So they when they go in, they're like, oh, I know this guy's already tough, so I got to go hard. And then when they go hard, as we all know, it's like you can't, most of the time, you can't just go harder and be more effective, most of the time. So they're going to go hard. It's less effective, so now they're losing their shit. You know? I understand what happens, and I get the... The Navy SEAL thing, we were just talking about this, you know, in the episode that I recorded with Jocko. It, it, for one, you're never going to put it down. But two, it, 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 uh, people look at it and they may not necessarily understand that there's a broad spectrum of individuals yeah. inside of that community, good and bad and everything in between. But it 100% puts a, a target on your back, yeah. whether or not you want it. I get hit yeah. up. People hit me up and say, hey, man, come train in our gym. and We'd love to have you. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to come and be the bullseye that walks through your gym. Yeah. People are like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a Navy SEAL come in. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not a Navy SEAL anymore. I've been out for six years. I didn't do any jujitsu while I was in. <laughs> you matter. see the color of my belt. That's the color of the belt that I have. Yeah. I don't have a fucking Harry Potter wand <laughs> that allows me <laughs> to, like, do anything <laughs> special. Yeah. And, yeah. So. Yeah, that's the truth. But in their mind, you do. So when, yeah, when you come in, like, think about it. Any any little thing when you get introduced, like, yeah. wherever, I don't care, elementary school, whatever, they're going to say, ooh, Navy SEAL. And everyone's going to be like, ooh, Navy SEAL. So that's just and how. And in full disclosure, if they come at me hard, I will also go back at them hard. So it's yeah. equally my part. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I have to well, own, own half that sandwich as well. <laughs> yeah, in a way though, like I think as a white belt Navy Seal or not, I think it's kind of the upper belt. Res- if in fact we're trying to avoid that kind of situation, oh, like, sure. a, like a like a like a real, it's up, it's more up to the upper belt, I think, because he has more capability of controlling. I think. So I think I'm going to take some ownership off your plate on that one. Isn't it weird how I'm as just much saying as when it accelerates, I'm like, all right, I'll dump it into fifth gear too. The <laughs> yeah. problem is I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 Isn't it weird how as much as everyone talks about leaving your ego at the door is so much of it revolves around ego and and you know I give the same advice that you give Leah to females I give to like you know a 56 year old guy that wants to start jiu-jitsu you should absolutely start jiu-jitsu it will be awesome you need to pick your right training partners you need to put your ego in check to say no to people I'm horrible about that like I'll have a injury right and I'll be like, no, I'm just gonna train with Andy and Echo today because those guys know that if they get whatever, like if I go, hey, stop, you know, then they'll be like, oh, cool. That doesn't mean that they won or they're gonna jump up and celebrate. <laughs> Where, but then some guy that you know of good but not quite as good, maybe super strong, and they'll be like, hey, you want to roll? And I'll be like, 
Yup. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I know in the back of my head, I'm like, God, you just, you're stupid. And I've gotten bit by that a couple times where I've gone with guys that, I, like, you know, had a little tweak injury. And then I go with someone and, you know, someone that's good athlete, strong, you know, decently, decent level of skill. And I know I shouldn't be training with them because I know, you know, I'll come to the gym going, hey, I'm just going to, just kind of, kind of mellow roll today. And look, I can have, I can have crazy. I can have quote mellow rolls that last for an hour with Dean or Andy or Echo that are total like no one on the outside would be able to look at it and go like oh that you know they're, they're kind of just they're kind of just cruising a little bit but for both me and them they know like oh yeah we were just cruising it's no big you deal you can't see the pressure you can't see the pressure but you know so someone's as on the sideline watching goes oh it looks like Jock was getting after it today hey let's go yeah, and yeah, what yeah. that guy's thinking is. Today's the day. Yeah, because yeah. you have a target on your back yeah. at all times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So today's the day, and they're going to dive for something. That's the other thing is they can dive for some move, the low, totally low percentage move, and if they don't get it, cool. They lost to Jocko, no big deal. Yeah. If they get it, bro, yeah. hail Mary. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. Beto. Hail yeah. Mary on some move. They're going to crank it, too. Yeah, they're going to crank it. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Oh, Guess what I should do? Crank it back. Tap. Freaking just tap, you know? <laughs> just oh, tap. That That's right? what I should do. Crank it, <laughs> crank it back. That's what I should Remote do. Move, yeah. mm-hmm. You know, I've been yeah. training for a quarter century. Somebody yeah. gets me caught in some move. I should be like, cool, tap. But what do I do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I even do that when I'm... So sp- is that the ego that prevents you 100%. from... 100%. Ta- so let me ask you this, because this is an interesting thing I've been thinking about. You, they say that jujitsu is very humbling and it strips the ego away. But as you advance in it, I feel that some of the higher belts will develop the ego back again. Yeah, and you got to be very careful of that. And where I see that manifest itself most clearly is when people don't want to roll, right? That's the most clear. Dodge the, the, yeah, the most clear manifest manifestation of that to me is is for me if I go in and and one of the pipe hitting younger guys that's really good says, "Hey, you want to roll?" and I go, "Oh, you know, uh, not today." You know, if I, I had that happen the other day with uh, Wes, and you know, I just got done with a bunch of rounds, and Wes is like, "Hey, you want to roll?" And I'm like, "Not really." And he's like, "Oh, okay." And then like ten seconds passed, and I was like, "Bro, let's go." You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I know this is going to be a crappy round for me, but you know, whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's not like Wes is. I mean, Wes is a black belt, and he's a, a beast. You know, and. I was just like, oh, that's my ego talking, saying, oh, you know, you don't want to have a tough round. You don't want to get tapped out by West, so I'll just sit here on the sidelines. That's where ego, that's one shade of ego. Or just responding poorly if things don't go their way. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, it's like, you know, you were talking about if there was a list in here of people who had tapped with a check mark next mm-hmm. to it every single time, like you'd have more than everybody. I'm the winner. And that's okay, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, to advance in the sport, you'd have to continue and learn those lessons from that tap. Yeah. But I think the ego... Especially when there's a, a difference between the color of the belt. Oh, yeah. Or and an outcome is an expected that doesn't go that particular direction. Yeah. I yeah. think everyone, like, pretty much, I would say 99, it's closer to 100% of people than it is 99% of people won't like when a lower belt taps them out. If they're really going, you know, like if, yeah. if we're really training and whatever and the lower belt taps them out. Or a rival that you have that's the same belt as you that you always get or you've always gotten, you know. Mm-hmm. So and then they get you for the first time or whatever, even the second time, really. Um, n- everyone, no one likes that. Like everyone, that's a thing for everyone in their mind. Now, yeah. how they physically like respond yeah, how it to that? Itself. Oh yeah, how they behave after that. That's gonna reveal like how much unhealthy ego they have. Here's some great advice from Jeff Higgs on this topic, and he told me this a long time ago. If you tap out someone that you don't normally tap out, when you when you shake hands and go again, like right then, yeah. you better be ready for the. Yeah, free, yeah, the you better bring it because <laughs> oh, yeah. so they're true. gonna they're gonna come after you yeah. like a like a like just a savage. Oh yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, and that and think about it. That's true. For uh, like, have you ever had that happen to you? Uh, where a guy comes after me? Yeah. Oh, after yeah, you, absolutely. Okay. So here's a question. Thousand Have times. you ever done that to somebody else when they got you? 
I'm sure I see have. how he was like all thinking, like, hmm, let me think, bro. Every single time, so <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's just how. Yeah, and I'm speaking from experience too, where someone would like get me, and First I'm like, bro, because that is 100 percent true. Like where where if yeah, you yeah, can yeah. if you can, it, yeah. When someone oh, gets you, you got you, me, huh? Here I come. Oh yeah, that's so. The when mindset. have I done this to you? Well, I've never tapped. I was you gonna out. say first of all, you had to tap me out. Oh, but yeah. well, you get a good move on me or something, or you get an offensive move and then I go. No, I, it's it's more. I don't believe that hesitation. I think we all know that. Like, if I don't know Andy or something like this, you're gonna bring it right after because just we know your personality this a- way. Andy's a bad example because we go back and forth. You know what I mean? There's no. There's no. Um, yeah, now, but then what? And what for about clarity, when we, first we should say that the Andy you're talking about is not sitting no, at this not table. A, not Andy, no. <laughs> yeah, Andy Burke. Yes, yeah, yes, Andy, Burke. Andy Burke. Just yes. so nobody is. Yeah, I don't yeah. need a larger target on my. Phone. <laughs> 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 I <laughs> tapped the guy that tapped Jocko. Yeah, oh, yeah. we are not talking about me. Yeah, yeah no, I, I of course, of when he, course. When he first, I, first, I guess, like, I guess we'll go no hesitation. Of course, if someone yeah. gets me, I'm gonna step it up. Oh, yeah, if it's someone that I, if it's someone that I haven't. <laughs> Although I don't know, I've had people tap me out where I've been like, "Hey, that was nice, man." Yeah, that was nice. It was a nice move. Yeah, I, I, to say I don't believe that, and you know, maybe not be true. So I get maybe, <laughs> you know, but I don't know, man. I don't know. You know. Well, I'll tell you who does that is Dean Lister. What? Oh, if you get if you uh, get him, he'll bro, bring it. Well, there's two ways he reacts. One is like he'll just be like whatever and kind of blow it off, and he's having a bad day, and he just he just kind of survives the rest of the time and then like leaves yeah but if it's not that kind of day and i catch him in something bro i'm about to just not only just uh, not only am i gonna get tapped out yeah, gonna i'm gonna get it. i'm gonna get punished like capital like a child yeah. bro i'm talking i'm talking things you would <laughs> if you you would if you saw dean beating me up yeah like if you were like okay if you if you came to to the gym and you happen to catch let's say i just caught dean and then he was one of those days where he, he wasn't having that. You would be watching, thinking that it was not true. You'd be watching it, going like, "This could, this isn't. Why doesn't Jocko do something? What's wrong with him? Like, what's his problem? Why is he, why is he playing around like this?" Someone yeah. help him. And the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the reality is, I can't do anything as a human. That's. 230 pounds that's been training training jujitsu for 25 years i can't do anything i can't no, you're do trying anything. everything no, you i can't, can't do, do yeah. anything i can't do anything uh, yeah. that's 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 an awful 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 thing you know yeah yes i mean we're, we're talking when he's belittling me <laughs> <laughs> like making fun of me like slapping me around and 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 belittling me and i can't do anything about it that's I have a question, Leo. Um, and I ask this because when I think about like my wife or when my daughter kind of grows up, where um, if in the event of them training with other other men, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of types of people that come in and train jujitsu, and yeah. not even uh, skill aside, just types of individuals. Do you get weirdos ever? Uh, very... Are you talking like perverts? Yeah, like it just. Yeah, more Which than I just that. took that from Theo Vaughn. So no, 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 it's perfect. Yeah, perverts, okay. Yeah. Perverts, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And I mean, or whatever. Just someone like weird, like, hey, your weirdness is going outside of the acceptable jujitsu kind of context, you know? Very, very occasionally. I, that goes more to mat culture. So yeah. it's, again, the, the coach or the leader in the gym has to police the mat and be willing to correct those people or throw them out of the gym. Yeah. Uh, and there are your training partners in the mat will do that as well, mm-hmm. you know, but you also have to be willing to say something. Right. And I've had women have really, really, really bad roles. And then they don't tell me or they'll quit. You know, they'll, they'll tell me <laughs> six months later, you know, I didn't go to open mat for six months and I'll kind of coax them back onto the mat and they'll be like, they'll tell me they had a really bad role with someone. What do you mean a bad role? Um, a role where maybe the person didn't try to submit them, but just held them down in a way that was made them feel really mm-hmm. out of control, didn't didn't work to improve the position, mm-hmm. just kind of mm-hmm. laid on them in a creepy way, kind of yeah. creepy mount so, top, <laughs> creep, yeah, yeah, just just um, kind of okay. What do you? What are we doing here? Like, are we just gonna lay on each other for three minutes and just kind of look at each when other? When you started <laughs> jujitsu, how long did it take you to get through or over or around the close body contact with sweaty dudes? 
I had done a bunch of traditional martial arts before, so I had done a little bit of contact. I'd done some throwing, you know, Aiki, Jitsu, and so I'd done a little bit of the contact, and then so taking that next step, it was it was a little bit weird at mm. first, for sure, but I was the only girl, you know, at my academy for quite a while. The first time I rolled with another female was at a competition. So it that was, sucked for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that was how everyone was, you know, they're People think, oh, if you are you train with men all the time, I said, well, that girl does too, believe me. You know, mm-hmm. there's not, especially, you know, at the black belt level, it's like they all they all train with guys. <laughs> so, Have you ever had a specific experience with, like, someone who's creepy? Um, I've had people get a little bit uh, fixated, you know, as, as I've been a coach. That's happened a time or two. Like, what and, do you mean fixated? Um, like, what does that look like to a person? <laughs> what does that you know? look do like? Do you want to roll nine times uh, in a row? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a little tactic right there. Yeah, yeah, just wanting to train with me specifically more than they should. You know, I've, I've seen men specifically choose only female partners. So it'll be that, a, that'll get you kicked right out of a, an academy. A yeah. minority a of women wonder. on the mat, and they're only partnering with women. Yeah. Um, and you know, so that was something that would happen, or just trying to message me, you know, over Facebook. Oh, or, yeah. What's starting you know. to creep me out is Echo just keep asking these questions about this. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, that's a concern. It, it is a it good is. point. I though, have a because, daughter too. Yeah, yeah I, worry I about got that. I got three daughters, and um, you know, two of them are older now, but for sure. They kind of grew up with jujitsu, you know, so they never had to enter into the jujitsu world mm. like cold turkey. Yeah. That's why. I, that's why I asked you about it because I know a lot of females. I mean, you show up if you show up for a first jujitsu class and you don't know what to expect. This is a freaking hole that you're not ready for this. Yeah. If you're not. used to it, I like really like personal space barriers and boundaries. Your first. Class is, is a nightmare. A, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a nightmare. Especially if there's guys involved. For and like, if it's all girls, yeah. that's hundred percent different. Yeah. yeah. Like if then if it's like mixed or all guys. Yeah. Or whatever. That idea of all female classes, especially for beginners, because after a while they don't care anymore. Right. You mm-hmm. know, after a while they don't. There should be about one a week. I mean, the other thing that'll happen is you'll get women wanting to train because they've had some trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been assaulted and. For them to partner with a guy is just not going to happen, mm-hmm. and so jujitsu becomes un- inaccessible to them. So I've had some women, you know, and they'll have a panic attack on the mat, you know. And sometimes it's not appropriate for them to do jujitsu first; they need to go through some trauma counseling. But I've had other women that, if they're partnered with women or they're training with women at first, they can overcome that and kind of work out of it. Yeah, I was going to say we've had some females that have done just that. Mm-hmm. You know, the first thing was like, hey, look, I'm not getting on the mat if there's men on the mat yeah. at all. It's not happening. Mm-hmm. And then over time, it's like they're rolling with men because they realize, but it takes it takes some time. It takes yes. some getting used to. Mm-hmm. If you were going to take a 10-year-old girl, I think actually 10-year-old's too young. 10-year-old girls, they don't have the, they're going to be fine rolling with boys. No factor, no 13, big deal. 14 Yeah, it's be 13, better. 14 where you start. How would you, how would you introduce a 13, 14 year old girl, is it, hey, let's find a female, let's find a place that has female classes only? Well, I coach actually most of the teens and kids at our academy, um, which is Straight Blast Gym out of Montana. And we have uh, kids classes for ages three up through 16. And my teen class, I have about 40 kids in there and a good portion of them are, are girls. So it's awkward at first, but mm-hmm. they're all kind of awkward, you yeah. know, at that age. They're just all sort of uncomfortable. So uh, we partner them with other females in the class if we can mm-hmm. um, and try to partner them with, you know, kids who've been there a little bit longer just so it's it's they can work through it quickly. You know, we give them time to socialize so they can kind of make friends. Do too. you put them in a gi immediately? Yes. I'll tell you, that might sound like a not a big deal, but like when it comes to wrestling, and you know you're in a singlet, and you know you're a 13, 14 year old girl. It's a nightmare. Go, it's it's yeah. The gi I think is a good place to start with yeah. uh, with yes. a young female. Yeah, for they're sure. they're all gi classes. Yeah. And I do have some women that don't like to roll without the gi for that reason. Wait, for what hmm. reason? Just it's another layer. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, like okay. a little too close yeah. contact. They yes. feel kind of exposed yeah. or uncomfortable. It's too much body to body contact. Yeah. So. Yeah. The and. <laughs> Part of the reason I asked too is that as a guy who's like into jujitsu, we don't think about that very yeah, often. No. Like, because mm-hmm. no one's going to be creepy to me 
unless they are, they got to be really creepy for me to even notice, you know. But like Nareed would tell me about stuff that happened at other places or whatever, yeah. and they have like nicknames for certain guys, mm -hmm. like oh he's whatever, and he's and they have nicknames for these creepy guys. So why do those creepy guys? Why are they allowed to stay? I I don't know because at some point, right? So, and again, everything that I say about jujitsu, put it through the lens of eighteen months of experience. Mm -hmm. But what you're about to say is correct. If there's a creeper in the gym, you're weaponizing the, their creeper mentality for sure. because it's just like any other tool. This ridiculously large butter knife, for example, <laughs> could be used to cut butter or it could be used to lop. Well, you couldn't really lop somebody's head off with that. You'd have to use the back sawing side of this, but that's a different uh, podcast. <laughs> yes, sir. Some of them Good are, or evil. Some of them are really subtle about when they do that's it. They're, the point. they're yeah. very careful yeah. about who's on the mat. But if they have Wait, a nickname, you're talking about the females? The oh, men. Yeah. The creeper men. The creeper men. The guys who are, yeah, who are have bad intentions. They'll wait until there's a coach maybe not directly on the mat or directly watching mm -hmm. them. They'll do things, you know, in transitions to and from locker rooms or in parking lots, you know. And this isn't stuff that necessarily happens at our school, but you'll see on women's Facebooks or forums that – They've had to leave a school because sometimes the student that's harassing them has been there a long time mm -hmm. and they have a lot of social credibility and they're not treating the men obviously the same way that they would treat the women. And so sometimes the guys won't think it's a big deal or they just right. don't want to believe that that person would do that. And yeah. especially if the female's <clears throat> newer, it just becomes a he said, she said thing. So it just goes back to mat culture. You know, what do you allow at your academy? You know, how do you allow uh, people to talk to the women there? Um, do you have a women's class? Do you have a children's class? Usually the, that stuff isn't going to fly there. You know, if you walk yeah. in and it's just only dudes, only 20-year-old dudes rolling on a mat, then you know, there's a reason for that. So, Andy, were you going to say that teaching these creepers jujitsu is... Like, it's a tool, right? It's, it's, it's weaponizing. You're this, weaponizing. Giving, giving that guy a skill that he shouldn't have. Well, and so my understanding of jujitsu at this point, right, is you're, you're learning how to control another human being. For sure. If you empower somebody who wants to control them for an other than honorable reason, are you not increasing their... Capabilities, capabilities to be yeah absolutely yeah but yes. that but that's a lot more rare that happens for sure yeah where that's kind of their goal you know whatever to yeah. be like i'm going to impose myself like on that level that's we'll, we'll call that level 10 right that's way more rare than this the spectrum or, or this uh, certain side of the spectrum of the subtlety so in it, we'll just say on one side of the spectrum there's like super subtle just like maybe the guy giggles more with the girl when he rolls that's Says all something they're doing. inappropriate yeah, that you can actually, hear not even that yet if you giggle that's that. a level 11. <laughs> no no no, no. Here, and here's why i say the giggle because i rolled like i never really roll with girls just by happenstance but so i rolled with this girl I, you know she was there for jujitsu she wasn't there to hook up she wasn't there to yeah. flirt she was there for but she would giggle like, you know, when like something, you know, she just kind of giggle in the transitions. And I remember thinking, this is wildly inappropriate to be <laughs> giggling at me right now. Like, this, you know, it really t threw me off. So that sort of made me think. Leah will sometimes <laughs> laugh when you roll. But here's <laughs> no. the problem. You're getting it, choked. You're about. She's laughing at you. You're yeah. about to be done. Like whatever <laughs> yeah. she was loading yeah. up is about the door is about yeah. to close on that. Yeah. And I, yeah, you're, you're about and to I mean, screwed. Nareet does that too. Nareet, the one, the, yeah, our, yeah. our black belt girl, she'll giggle too. Yeah. Like when, but but if you have a nickname, different. what if you have a nickname, which is probably okay. through repetitive behavior? Yeah. What level is that? Yes, yeah. So you, now you're talking down the spectrum. But before you get there, where you have a nickname, yes. To me, in my opinion, anyway, I don't know these people with the yeah, nicknames or whatever. But um, when you're at that level, oh yeah, you should have been out of the gym a long time ago. But there's many different levels yeah. to that. And then, so it's like, where do you start saying, hey, do you tell the guy, hey, don't giggle, that's inappropriate, and make him feel like he's some, like, predator or something? When he's like, dang, bro, I was like, I, I didn't realize I was doing it. You know, he had no intention. So it's it's hard to sort of get that spot on, on the spectrum and then make us, you know, take a stand at that point, at uh, an appropriate point, because you don't know where, in fact, that is. And then you get the fact that some, most guys, I think, anyway, Maybe I'm naive. I don't know. But most guys don't realize they're doing it. They think like, oh, maybe this girl likes me or whatever. <laughs> or maybe I'm going to give this girl a compliment, you know, or something like that. Um, and then they say it. And the girl's like, oh, this guy's giving me like compliments on my eyes or something like that. And he's thinking that he's doing the right thing. 
You, you have fantastic eyes, by the way. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Super creepy. <laughs> Very know, creepy. It's good eyebrows to go well, with it, too. Technically, there's a lot of like creepy things that guys can do. Like if you look in someone's eyes while you roll with them, it seems weird. <laughs> oh, I, you don't think I don't play any of these games? Yeah. I will take every advantage that I can possibly. I mean, yeah. why can't you lick somebody during a roll? I uh, guarantee I you, you'll get out of whatever <laughs> no. position you're in. That's level 10, bro. That's level 10. It works? Yes. But you see what I'm Unless saying, Unless they though? lick you back. With that subtlety, it's, like, it's kind of like, man, it's, it's kind of a weird kind of scenario because especially when you get guys who don't realize they're doing it fully or they think that it's not that big of a deal genuinely don't think if it is or think it's that big of a deal you know so i think like when i, I got the best exposed path to it is to acknowledge it and openly and honestly have a discussion with that person yeah, as like, soon as hey, man, possible you yeah. don't need to do that yeah. or whatever hey i'm yeah. not rolling you anything because of the way you just did that you know what's really uh, sad about this is like okay I got I got daughters you know three daughters and one son and obviously I've thought about it at particular moments of their grappling careers if as it were but like girls females are just dealing with this all basically all the time yeah, yeah. like you, it like, right, like it, it, you're basically like this never comes up right this never comes up. echo and i never ever say like have you rolled with bill he's kind of creepy you know i've never <laughs> i might say bill stinks yeah. or bill whatever but yeah. you're not saying like hey has he ever like you know kind of made some adjustments in your guard and like no that never had that conversation and i remember seeing a um some kind of some kind of documentary or something about being a female and they were going around asking like when's they asked a bunch of men when's the last time you were scared Never. And a, guy, a guy's like, well, you know, like six years ago, my car broke down and there was a gang fight going on and there was rounds <laughs> flying overhead <laughs> and I ran for cover, but the rounds were impacting right next to me. I was pre I was sweating that. And then, you know, they'd ask the next guy and he's like, oh, there was a bank robbery. And, you know, they, that's what a guy thinks. And then they ask a female, like, when's the last time you were scared? And they're like, oh, Tuesday night I had to walk to the car or Thursday night I had to, you know, and you're like, wow. Yeah. It's, it's a different reality. It is. Yeah. No, it is. And I think what you can do is learn to protect yourself the best you can. You know, I'm learning to shoot now too. Yes. So I'm working on that. You know, uh, we have a black belt that was a longtime police officer and he's just like, learn how to fight at every range, yeah. learn how to use weapons, you know, make yourself really difficult to kill. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, and that's where I was going with this is like, to, to for someone because I'm sitting here thinking man if I was a female I'm listening to this I'm thinking you know part of you thinking oh I'm never gonna go do jiu-jitsu if this, if this is what it's like but that's the absolute wrong answer that we already talked about like the answer is no you go you train you learn this look you have to give that warning that there's gonna be perverts out there the vast majority of people yeah, right. you're totally good to go yeah, it's you're the anomaly totally not the norm yeah, I'd say and don't let the anomaly paint your experience so and I would be say like yeah. I said it matters when you walk in if you see a kids class if you see women if you see female coaches you know it's going to be fine when I went when I walked in uh, my coach's wife was there and she's a brown belt now and so it was just I asked him because I was a little bit worried. I said, is this, is it okay that I'm female? You know, you only have five or six guys on the mat. You know, they're all rolling nogi. I'm like, is it all right if I train here? And he said, yeah, why wouldn't it be? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Yeah, that's the disconnect, and, right? Where guys are just like, yeah, of course. So he had his wife take me aside and I said, well, is it, am I going to get beat up? You know, do they not want girls here? And she said, no, why, why would you think? No, it's going to be fine. No, it'll be fine. And I was like, okay. So I got on the mat and you, at that point you just, you roll the first day you come mm -hmm. in now we have a beginner program you mm -hmm. know to like kind of ease you on in but they're like you just get on the mat and wrestle so um yeah it, it was he just kept a really good culture and all the guys you know i had tough roles but i never was afraid i was going to get hurt mm -hmm. nobody was inappropriate or creepy or anything like that you know i had a, i had a really good experience coming up i mean it was physically challenging it was mentally challenging but it wasn't I didn't ever feel unsafe. Like they became some of my really good friends. I mean, some of us that started together still work at the same academy under my coach. You know, they're black belts now, so they're you know they're some of my closest friends. Yeah. The, the other thing that comes up is, well, would this stuff really work for a female, like a small female, in a you know going against a meth head that's two hundred and forty pounds or whatever? And my answer is always, well, if there's two things, two parts. Of this, how long does it take to learn this stuff, right? Well, my answer to that is when when are you going to get attacked, right? Sh sure, if you start jujitsu on Monday and you get attacked on Wednesday, it's not going to be a lot of good. It'd be better than nothing. <laughs> but the bottom line is, you know, and I used to say this in the SEAL teams when they were pushing all these weird like martial arts things. And one of the reasons behind using these weird martial arts, they're like, well, you can teach this in a week. And I'm like, hey, 
first of all, you can't teach very much about fighting in a week. And second of all, you're in the teams for 20 years. You got time. Let's learn something useful. That's part number one. And part number two is, look, a 110 pound purple belt in jujitsu, female, against a 245 pound psycho meth head, he's gonna win. And and now look, if he knows absolutely nothing, sure, but you, you gotta you gotta figure he's gonna be able to overpower her. That being said, and this is why I say you start training and you never stop, that that guy, it might take him if, he, if she doesn't know anything, he can have her pulled away in a van in three seconds. If she knows jujitsu, it's a two minute fight. And in that two minute fight, the cops come, people get the license, all these things happen. You yeah. delay that for long enough, and most of these scumbags, the last thing they wanna do is have to get into a fight. And so, that right there. The other thing is, if you've never been grabbed before, if you don't know what that feels like, you can't even get through that shock. You won't even make, you won't even react in any way whatsoever. When someone grabs you, pulls you, when you do jiu-jitsu, that's yeah. every day. Oh, and you'll know immediately, you'll see openings, you'll be able to do things, so you can forestall something really bad happening. And that's why I think even a 110 pound purple belt against a 245 pound psychopath, that guy's gonna pick another victim after about 14 seconds of like, wait a second, what just, oh, ow, ow, you know, all these things are happening really quick. And then you add in, you know, you see the cheesy videos of like, well, I'll do this eye strike and that'll stop the attacker. And and you go, oh, that anybody that knows anything about fighting knows that, hey, if I do an eye poke on you, it's not going to end the fight. Because first of all, I'm, but if you're in a real situation and you take a bite out of someone's cheek or to bite off their nose, like I had a friend that bit off a guy's nose and it was like, well. I mean, it's, it, <laughs> you don't think about it, but it's a kind of a fight ender, like, you know? It's, like, a, power, it's a boss move, it's for a, sure. It's a, it's a power move, and so now you put yourself into a situation, you know, Dean used to say this, Dean used to be like, hey, if I know, if I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu or a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, and you decide you're gonna bite my cheek, well, then I'm just gonna punish you for it because that's the only thing that you you did. We talked about this before. We had a guy, Igor, who's a team guy, and he was in a street fight and got his ear bit off. Um, not off completely, but a legitimate bite was taken out of his ear. Yeah, Mike Tyson style. Yeah, bigger than the Mike Tyson, yeah. actually. Uh, it was a pretty big a chunk. A hearty yeah. bite. Yeah, <laughs> and he, uh, and like the guy bit his ear, and then he was, you know, on the guy that bit it, the guy that bit Igor's ear was on the bottom. Paying for Igor the was, insolence Igor of Igor was the bite. then across side, and like that, that ear bite didn't help anything. But if you've reversed those roles, like if you yeah. know jujitsu, and then you start adding in biting off people's noses or whatever, it can be effective in making a assault that would take three seconds for a 245 pound guy to get a hold of and take a girl and put her into a car or whatever, can turn that into number one, a scrap, number two, like a two minute evolution, and number three, a possibility that this guy just says, hey dude, I'm not putting up with this right now. This is what I, this is what I signed up for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I teach a, a lot of women self defense programs and the first thing we walk on is actually, or work on is actually just teaching them to walk. Um, how they carry themselves, their body language. It has a lot to do with victim selection. Mm -hmm. And once you learn how to grapple, or if you're an athlete, you tend to carry yourself differently and you are far less likely to be selected as a victim. So we literally just work on posture and eye contact and how are you sitting, who are you surrounding yourself with, so just avoiding those bad situations before you get into it. And then we do a grappling-based self-defense program where it's just escape and you have to be able to run at that point. You have to be able to be in good enough shape to fight as hard as you can to get out and know a little bit of technique and then you have to be able to run. So if you're not healthy, uh, that's going to be really challenging. So you know, we teach you have to take care of yourself, you have to take care of your body. Even if you're not going to become a grappler or a fighter, you need to be strong. So we, we really instill a lot of that at the beginning. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's been an hour. We usually try and do these things for an hour and not six hours or five and a half hours. <laughs> um, Andy, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, thank you. Leah, thank you. Thank you. Echo. You're welcome. Whatever. <laughs> this is, uh, if you want to support this podcast, then go to jockostore.com or go to originmain.com. And other than that, Stay grounded. <laughs>